In this tutorial, we're going to talk about another significant rendering change that's coming in cycles in Blender 4.0 that deals with color management. We're specifically going to talk about color gamuts and view transformation. To date, Blender and Cycles have used sRGB as the display device, meaning the color gamut, and it's used Filmic as the view transform. The display device is getting a few more options, such as the wider gamut P3 color space, but of most interest is the view transform function, Filmic. It's being replaced with a new, more advanced function called AGX because it has some limiting issues that really need to be addressed. The move to AGX makes way for further advances in the cycle's renderer, such as spectral rendering, along with the ability to use wider gamut color spaces, which Filmic can't do. Let's first understand that Blender is using these two functions to address color and color intensities, meaning a color gamut and the view transform. A color gamut is a way of representing a total range of colors a device can represent. Technically, a gamut is a range of chromaticities, meaning color, based on three RGB axis points charted within the 1931 CIE chromaticity diagram. The 1931 CIE chromaticity diagram is based on research done in the late 1920s and early 30s that sought to define the total range of colors humans could perceive. Modern display devices are capable of showing only a limited range of what human vision can perceive, and so we have to take a subset of this total gamut and use that for rendering purposes. The most commonly used gamut is the sRGB color space, but other color spaces are in use. The laptop I record this on is a 2021 MacBook Pro with a wider P3 color gamut as an example. However, the 1931 CIE chromaticity diagram only shows a cross-section or two-dimensional view of the total color with respect to intensity. You can think of this as a brightness or luminosity of a color, and the chart shows a uniform brightness for reference purposes, but a single color can have many degrees of brightness that need to be taken into account by a renderer. This is where a view transform comes into play. A view transform is a way of taking high intensity colors that are in what's called an open domain space and fitting them into a closed domain space. What that means in human terms is that while a renderer can compute light intensity values that go way above a standard maximum white value of 255, a display can't necessarily display those. For instance, as defined by 8-bit RGB values maxing out at 255 in each channel, high intensity colors need to be fitted and represented within this 255 closed domain. However, renderers compute color using floating point representations of color, and this allows for luminosities for a particular color to extend way above this white monitor display capability. If you don't deal with this, colors will just look clipped and blown out. That's what a view transform helps to deal with. So the color gamut and view transform both work together to take the raw computed color information from high precision ray tracing operations and make them both viewable on display devices and also perceptually pleasing and correct to the human viewer. And this is where Filmic and AGX come into play. While the two categories seem separated, one dealing with brightness intensity and the other dealing with color, the view transform function is also dealing with how to adjust high intensity color in a way that's more sophisticated than just simply shifting the color in a linear way down into monitor visible space. So let's first look at an example that doesn't have a lot of chromaticity or color, but does have a lot of intensity to understand what the view transform is doing. So when we look at this rendering, it's lit by a very hot HDRI image. You can clearly see that we've got some blown out areas on the lens component. The background's also pretty bright. If we now come over to the view transform, I've got it set to standard, which means no view transform. It just clips. That's all it does. 
So let's turn on Filmic, and you can see it does a nice job of bringing that, those clipped areas into range. So let's come over and take a look now at AGX for comparison. And you can see that it may be darkened just a little bit, but because there's not a lot of color here, it, they're both going to behave pretty close to each other. In fact, on a lot of scenes that have only sort of mid-range color intensities and mid-range saturations, they're going to behave fairly similarly. You will notice some differences, so just be prepared for that. But what I'm thinking I like now that I've got this on is to maybe reintroduce a little bit of contrast. So this is where you would come down to look and you would come to say, let's try high contrast. And I like that. This is an adjustment that's happening to the rendered pixels after they've gone through the view transform. This isn't something that's happening in the ray tracing pipeline itself. For a broad range of more average colors, Filmic and AGX will be generally similar. However, Filmic has some distinct disadvantages compared to the newer AGX view transform in some key areas. So let's talk about those. So number one, Filmic doesn't work with wider gamut color spaces. Blender up to this point has been restricted to the more limited sRGB space. Number two, Filmic has a lower dynamic range than AGX does where Filmic was designed to replicate the range of a film camera, which is about 16 stops, AGX has a stop range of 25, which is closer to that of the human visual range. Number three, Filmic struggles with more highly saturated colors that also have high intensities. In this case, as the broad range of colors becomes more and more intense, their hues shift towards just six colors before they finally attenuate into white. This is called the six colors problem. The six color problem relates to the fact that when we have a gradation of color, as the intensity of brightness increases, these colors collapse into six colors. So I have a bitmap of this gradation of color bands that creates sort of this rainbow that I have driving into a material assigned to that polygon, that bitmap goes both to the base color and into emission. And I have this polygon emitting a little bit of light. I then have a linear gradient going left to right to give us darkness on the left side. And then what I have on the right side, I've got this area light. It's putting a lot of illumination down on just that side. Okay, so let's come over to our camera, noting again that we are in no view transform. This is just going to be what the colors do, only being bounded by sRGB. And we get this. So that bright area light is producing a lot of illumination on this side. You can see that these colors collapse into six total colors. We've got one for this dark red. Everything else in this area over here turns into a yellow. We've got a single green band, a bunch of these baby blue colors, a single dark band of blue, and then magenta. So all of these colors are collapsing into these six colors. So let's come over now and turn on Filmic. Well, Filmic improved the transition, but Filmic hasn't gotten rid of the six color problem. Let's see now what happens when we turn on AGX. Watch this. Notice that in this bright area, we can still make out all the individual color bands as they go into this bright area. And this is where AGX is really going to improve things on bright, intense colors. So let's take a look at some other examples. Let's take a look at a really interesting scene that's going to demonstrate the benefit of AGX over Filmic. I've got a scene here where I'm wanting to test out different colors, potentially for the use in the background of my, of my product visualization here. And I've got a very bright light sitting down here that's producing this upward push of illumination. On the backdrop itself, I have individual polygons that are being assigned individual materials. And each of those materials has these very bright sort of primary types of colors applied to them. And that light pushing up is just not working so great in standard, especially because, you know, we're using sRGB and sRGB is struggling to handle that. 
Now, let me point out, if you're using something like a recent MacBook Pro that has the Retina display, it can handle the P3 color profile. And that actually is going to improve some of these colors to some degree because it is a wider gamut. But I'm going to go back to sRGB being more limited because that's going to exemplify why AGX really is so good. So if we come over now to Filmic and we turn Filmic on, well, Filmic kind of maybe helped a little bit with the transition, but we still get total inconsistency in the brightness of these color bands as they come close to the illumination of that bright, bright, bright light that I have down here. So as soon as I turn on AGX, watch what happens. We get consistency in the brightness of these regions across each of the bands. We have a much more consistent look of the colors. Now, one of the things that you're going to note is that the colors do seem a bit less saturated, and that's part of the resolution of the six color problems. Filmic was holding on to too much saturation with increasing intensity. And what this does is it's also going to give you greater control of adjusting these colors, either using compositing or whether you're taking this into another application for doing final color work. This is going to give you more to work with because when you're just working with filmic it just simply can't handle that and it's just not even giving you final rendered pixels that you could do much with so agx is definitely superior in handling this area let's look at this scene rendered in high res where i've adapted the lighting to produce even more of this effect that we're examining this is the version with filmic and when i turn on agx this is what we get. Notice how more dynamic that is. Let's look at this with a maroon background where we have filmic. And now I'm going to turn on AGX. Look at that. Let's look at this with a yellow background. This is filmic. And now we turn on AGX and we get that. That's definitely more dynamic. And finally, we're going to turn it on with the blue background where we have filmic here. And now we turn on AGX, and that's what we get. So let's take a look at some other examples. Here's an interesting scene where I've got these three cylinders that are emitting light, and each one of them is emitting a primary, like a green, a red, orange, and a blue. And this is in standard, meaning we don't have a view transformed. It's just simply being filtered through the color space through sRGB. You can clearly see that on these white spheres, it's pretty ugly what's happening with the color. It's just blowing out and the transitions are not very good. So let's turn on Filmic. Filmic certainly improves some of what's happening, but look at how that color is just really overly saturated. So this is actually a manifestation of the six color problem, where as the intensity increases, colors are collapsing into one of those six colors and we just get this really overly saturated dark color in bright regions. So now when we turn on AGX, this is what you get. AGX is so superior in this situation where we have nice bright transitions away from the light cylinders and each of the light cylinders themselves, you get a hint of the color and we get definite distinction in the bands of color. And because I have a volume here expressing in that volume. So let's look at some other examples. Let's look at this other interesting example. Let's turn this on, noting that we have the view transform set to standard, which means it's not doing anything. Turn it on and boy, there's that bright light and yikes, that doesn't look so great. If we come over and we turn on Filmic, Filmic improves it, it improves the transition, but we still get this kind of collapsing of the colors. So let's turn on AGX now and look what AGX does. Do you see how AGX maintains individual bands? You can still see them and it gives us the better representation of those bright areas. You're gonna note that we can come down to the look and we can further improve the saturation of the color now by coming up to one of the looks like high contrast. Do you see how that kind of even further improves it? So these looks actually can really improve an image. And AGX at times will tend to produce somewhat less saturated looking images. And adding one of the looks can really help with that. 
Here's another variation of this where I'm actually using the CIE color chart as a bitmap to apply onto here using my bright tube light with just standard, so no view transform. It clearly doesn't look very good. Let's turn on filmic. Filmic certainly improves the transition and the smoothing between these areas. But as soon as we turn on AGX, we get this. At first, it seems a little bit desaturated. So this is where we could come in and we could apply one of the looks to it to further increase the contrast and the saturation. But that's the point. It's giving you something that is much better and easier to work with. I want to talk about ACES for a minute because I know some people are going to ask me about ACES. ACES is another view transform that's also a combination of a color space. It stands for Academy Color Encoding System. It's a color image encoding system created by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. The visual effects industry has developed this and it's been around for a while. And it's been designed so that people doing visual effects have a common color language to work with. There was a lot of discussion during the development, early development of Blender 4.0 and the cycles that goes along with that, whether they should use ASUS as a replacement for Filmic. And it was very interesting to read that there was a fair amount of resistance and the debate got to be kind of heated at times. The developers ultimately decided to go with AGX. And the six color problem that we've looked at so far is one of those reasons. And it turns out that ACES also tends to struggle with this. So let's take a look at some examples. We looked at this example early on, and I specifically didn't show the ACES version because I wanted to kind of cover that separately. So this is the standard without any view transform. It's simply being run through sRGB. Now, if we turn on the ACES version, this is what we get. So you can see right off the bat, ACES looks pretty good. It doesn't have any contrast looks. So you kind of get what you get. The colors look nice and saturated, and there isn't any excessive blown out areas. But I want to bring your eyes attention to something. In a couple of areas, there are some interesting color shifts. This is a very blue light. And look at how it's reflecting onto this white sphere. There's a slight purplish shift in the color. So this is one of the things that could happen with ACES is you get these kind of color shifts with some hues. We actually see a little bit of the manifestation right here where we have a lot of green, but it actually is shifting a little bit into yellow. And you can see here in this packaging that we looked at earlier in the tutorial, this strong shift towards the purplish hue. This is something that ACES can tend to do that AGX does not do. ACES could also tend to struggle a little bit with the six color problem when you really get into very saturated colors. Let me turn on AGX so that we can see AGX in comparison to this. And you can see right off the bat that AGX kind of goes in the opposite direction. It tends to become a little bit less contrasty in some situations and a little bit less saturated. But I think that's actually a good thing because it gives us more control over making post adjustments, for instance, adding a contrast look to it. So was it the right choice to not use ACES and use AGX? I don't know. I, I, I'm not smart enough to make that call, to be honest. But I think AGX is a really good direction. It's a very strong tool, and I'm glad they've done that.